Hello guys and welcome to the next live stream on FC Barcelona's Twitch channel and welcome to the next locker room FC Barcelona against Getafe. Guys, there are so many good news. We have everything in our own hands to fight for La Liga because uh, Real Madrid has dropped some points. So yeah, if we win now every match, we will win also our second title um, this season because yeah, we already uh, have won now uh, a nice trophy. Yeah, the Copa del Rey guys. So it was such a cool, uh, yeah, what a match guys. What a performance. I have no words. Um, it was just a 10 out of 10 and yeah. Dan, how are you doing? I hope you're also like super, super happy about our uh, first trophy, yeah? Well, yeah, you said you had no words. So I guess, I mean, we would stop the stream, but I wasn't on the live coverage. So I guess I have a few words to say about the Copa del Rey. And I also want to mention as we start this stream too, if you hear some buzzing and things in the background, I've got a construction company up on the second floor of where I live. Unfortunately, this is not the construction company that's gonna be working on Camp No re uh, renovations. This is a different company. They're just working on this house here. So if you hear that, again, don't be distracted because I'm here to celebrate the Copa del Rey and then talk about, yeah, La Liga is still in Barcelona's hands, as you mentioned. There's a lot of exciting things to happen. So that's why we're doing this stream. That's why we're here. And uh, I mean, let's just say hello to everybody and then we'll get right into the action, right? I think it could be that this uh, season will be exciting to the yeah. last game. It could I mean, be. yeah, I think it will be. And I think it's on, you and I are talking about the remainder of this schedule and you and I are talking about the race as a whole because, I mean, I don't want to speak for you. I don't know if either of us really want to break down Hadafe now, but I think that's what we should do. I think we should push forward and try to break down and talk about Hadafe, which is a, a team in, in Madrid, uh, just on the outskirts of Madrid, um, but it is one of the Madrid sides, if you will. Not one of the big ones, but they did play in the Europa League this year, it should be mentioned. So I, yeah, let's, let's get down to it. Let's talk about the Barca squad. And I, I think the first question comes from a Barca perspective, Anton, as we start this segment, that Barca are now coming off a 4-0 win in Copa del Rey, but they've had a whole week to rest. They've had a whole week to think about what they want to do. Um, and I mean, I truly believe this is a squad that's been able to shift their focus back to the Liga. I don't think it ever got off the Liga, but they were able to take care of business in the Copa del Rey. So I think, I mean, we were having people also mention too that the mentality of this Barca team, I'm not worried about them getting refocused. Um, but the, the real question is going to be against what is it going to be a very, very, I'll talk about Adafe, don't you worry, but the low, low block of Adafe, of the, the most defensive team in the Liga, if you will. Um, what, will Barca try a different thing th than they have done? Or more likely, I think Barca might continue on with this 3-5-2 and try to do what they did to Athletic Club and just put as much pressure as possible on that back line and make those center backs, make those fullbacks, make as many decisions, that being Adafes, as possible. And finally, you'll break through. Even if it takes to the 88th minute, you'll break through eventually if you can wear them down. I think that'll be the game plan. And yeah, guys, you can see the last five meetings on the right of the uh, screen. Uh, the last time against Getafe, we lost 1-0 in this season in, in the first game of La Liga. And uh, then 2-1 for us, 2-0 for us, 2-0, 2-1. So, but yeah, last five meetings were like always very close. Just one goal or two, point, two goal difference. Yeah. Uh, so the history in the last two, three years says that it won't be an easy match. Uh, and there won't be too many goals, but of course, I hope um, the opposite. And now let's check out. Uh, at first, I would say let's start with the last FC Barcelona lineup and then we will jump to the last um, Getafe lineup. And uh, yeah, do you think then we will start a similar? I think so, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think the only questions would be about fitness, about not even rotation, but about fitness. So how's PK feeling? If PK's feeling fine, he probably will start again. Um, I, we could see Araujo get a start over Langley or over Mingetha just for rotation, just to keep him fresh. Sergio Roberto, I think he needs a few minutes. Yes, he came on uh, in the Copa del Rey uh, for the second half, but I think for Roberto, just getting him up to match fitness is gonna be helpful. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Dest on the bench and Roberto in for him, uh, whether or not with Roberto, Ronald Koeman wants to play him out wide on the right side in that 3-5-2. Again, having these questions to be able to be answered is a good problem to have. Same thing with Dembele might come back in for Griezmann um, because against Hadafe, you're going to want some of that verticality of Dembele. You wanna, you're going to want to try to get in behind. Um, you're going to want as many runs in that box as possible, though. So unfortunately, Brothwaite, we'll talk about this later. Unfortunately, he was injured, but 
I would have even said he was a candidate to be a reference point against that low block as the only real number nine, if you will, uh, the only real striker that Barca has. So I think there's a lot of different options, there's a lot of different possibilities um, against this squad. And even, hey, I mean, you know me, I'm always for throw ES Mariba out there and let the kid run, <laughs> right? If Adafe thinks they're going to get in the head of these veterans or they're going to try to, uh, I mean, not even try, you know that Hadafe is going to be physical. There's going to be a lot of fouls. It's going to get ugly. So, hey, throw the kid in there and let his energy, let his exuberance run all over that team that's going to be cynical. So, yeah, Braithwaite, uh, unfortunately, guys, is uh, injured. We don't know how many days um, he will be out of the squad. Um, it depends how his injury will uh, develop. But, uh, yeah, the question is now how, how feels Dembele? He played some minutes against um, Athletic Club Bilbao. So, but I could imagine that we will start like almost the similar way here yeah. um, as for um, in our like offense because Griezmann played very good, so he definitely deserves again a starting sp spot. And also Jordi Alba, Des, I think they will play also both. Maybe Sergio Roberto uh, in the midfield will start, and maybe uh, Pedri gets a little break, or yep. he just will play in the second half. I could imagine this. Yep, and that makes then, sense to me. Yep. Of course, yeah, Pique, Araujo, maybe there will be a little rotation. But the rest, I think Busquets uh, will start definitely. And yep. all right, uh, now we can talk a little bit uh, about the last lineup of Getafe. Yeah, let's do it off, eh? So. The lineup against Real Madrid and they equalized 0-0. Yep. Chuchureya also, uh, a former Barca player who comes from La Masia. I'm a big fan of him. Um, I really like him. And yeah, the rest, I think, also... Carlos Alenia. Carlos Alenia, yeah. Another Barca player, guys. He's on loan there. He will uh, return to Barcelona in the summer. But um, yeah, do, do you know how, how he's performing at the moment in Getafe or in general Ale this season? Yeah, I mean, Kukurea and Alenia have been two of Getafe's best players. I mean, this is a team that is struggling. You see, they play in that 4-4-2. Uh, just like Messi knew the Athletic Club were going to play in a 4-4-2, Adafe is the other club, I'd say, in the Liga that you could put as much money as you have, put it on the table that Adafe and Bordelas is coming out in a 4-4-2. It's going to be tight. This is a team, that being Adafe, that did get the better of Barca the first time the two teams met. That was probably maybe the ugliest game of the season for both for, for Barcelona, and that's what Adafe wants to do. They want to muddy things up. They want to get nasty. Um, this Adafe team, though, while they did play in the Europa League, while this is a team that finished in the top seven last year, I think all of that competition, COVID plus the Europa League and all the different matches they have this year, have really did them in. They just don't have the depth that they need to compete in all those competitions. So right now, they're four points off the relegation zone. They could easily be dragged down if they lose three points. So... Yeah, I mean, for Adafe, I think they're they're a bit desperate as well. Um, but as you mentioned, that's not really the fault of Kukure and Alenia, who've been basically two of their only real attacking options. I mean, creativity-wise, creating opportunities, creating chances. I think if I remember right, Kukure in the first half of the year was top six or top seven in all of the Liga in created chances just because he he's going to go and run at that back line over and over and over and over again. So, I mean, I could see Roberto starting for that reason. Um, maybe Des and Mingaith, again, the, the double pairing has been good. Um, but yeah, Alenia has been good for them, collecting two assists and being one of the only real creative forces. And um, unlike Alenia, another name that people might know, Tekufusa Kubo, who was in the academy, now he's with Real Madrid on loan. Um, he hasn't really been playing much for Bordelas. Bordelas not really vibing with him too much. So Alenia is the one who came in to be the starter. Kukure, you mentioned three goals, one assist for him this season, coming off that left wing. Um, yeah, and Barca did lose 1-0 earlier this year. Um, and Gaddafi, one of the big reasons they've struggled is their forwards. You see Mata and um, Enes Unyal, they're not two players, I think, that make a lot of headlines, obviously. They lost their uh, their main starting forward in, in, in Cucho. He's gone for the season now. Um, he was, you know, an attention getter, at least took some of the distraction for the center backs. But um, now Adafe is even defending more, if that's even possible. So without Cucho, it's more responsibility on the experience and gritty strikers in Wame Mata and Angel Rodriguez coming off the, mm -hmm. usually coming off the bench. Plus, again, 23-year-old Enes Unal, the Turkish forward. Is He's that a name? You He's very good. Yeah, I mean, it's that's a name right. that people will remember. He was a promising teenager for, was it Man City? I think, and then he went on loan even to the Turkish League last year. Um, but yeah, it hasn't really worked out from a top level. So now he's basically trying at 23 to say, hey, you know, I can perform at a team like Adafe. Uh, I mean, what do you call a mid-table La Liga team? 
Um, yeah, and then try to come back from there. They were in the Europa League. That's why they signed him for what they did. Um, and then for me, on the right side, you see Naom. That's the name that you, we remember him. That's the name that kind of makes my stomach turn. There is confusion, I think. Actually, <laughs> this is odd, but there is confusion about whether or not he'll be playing. Will he be facing a yellow card suspension? Some outlets are saying yes. Some outlets are saying no. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a respect thing that I don't want to see him. But last time they met in the fall, he almost injured Ansu Fadi, as you'll remember, before Ansu Fadi was injured against Real Betis. But Neil almost, almost uh, took the scalp first. So not a player that I like to see. I think he's one of the... The, um, I think he's one of the nastier players in La Liga, but again, not that yeah, but... the rest of that, not that the rest of this team is known for their clean tackles. We see even on the bench for this one, um, what was it? Yeah, Angel Rodriguez gets in there, Kofi gets in there, Damian Suarez. Oh, that's the other one. Damian Suarez coming off the bench. Even if Neom isn't playing, it'll be Damian Suarez in that spot. And I think if I remember, he had a real nasty tackle on Messi in the fall, so... Yeah, I mean, this one's gonna be ugly, but get your popcorn, and uh, I hope we see some fireworks from Barca, too. And their uh, two top scorers are Angel Rodriguez and mm -hmm. uh, Mata also, to, uh, both together with uh, 10 goals, each uh, five goals. So uh, each has five goals. So um, yeah, I'm missing a little bit Angel Rodriguez. I think he's injured probably because I haven't seen him on the on the bench. So yeah, but also uh, Chuturea, yeah, with three goals. Arambari also with three goals. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely have to, to keep an eye on them. But uh, in the last five meetings, we haven't seen too many goals. So I think it will it will be a close one. And for the people on YouTube, a comment here um, below this video. Where are you from, guys? From where will you watch um, tomorrow's match or you, uh, when you see this video, today's uh, match? So yeah, comment your uh, location in the comment section below. Uh, would be interesting to know. Here you see all the international uh, time zones. In Tokyo we will play very very early in the morning at uh, 5 a.m. So people have to wake up very very early. Definitely not my uh, time normally. But uh, here in Europe and Barcelona we will play of course at uh, 10 p.m. at Central Euro European time. In Lon London 9 p.m. Istanbul 11 p.m. And uh, yeah for example here in South Africa also 10 p.m. Uh, Cape Town. Oh, I didn't know that they have the the exact same time here yeah, in South Africa, like in Barcelona. <clears throat> New York, 4 p.m. So this is a uh, dance time, right? And yep, yep, now, right, hardly afternoon. So we we will jump to my favorite part, and it's the prediction <laughs> section. We can guess our score on the FC Barcelona webpage, guys. Yeah. So yeah, and Anton right. gets to go first. Yeah. Okay, I will go first again. Do it up. My last prediction was 4-0 and we actually won 4-0. Yeah, uh, it. it was a very risky prediction, but I had like a very optimistic and I felt like a little bit uh, comfortable with it. So uh, that's why I predicted with four goals. But this time I will go for a 2-1. I think it will be a very mm. close match. Of course, <laughs> I would prefer a 5-0, but I think it yeah. will be a close one. So uh, maybe... a. I don't know, 2 0 for Barca, and then like in the 80th or uh, 93rd minute when it uh, doesn't matter anymore, uh, Getafe yeah. will score. But, um, or maybe also a 2 0. So 2 0, 2 1. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know so I, I will go for 2 0. No, <laughs> I, I don't want the Getafe goal. I will go for 2 0. Talking to us out of it. So, yeah, so I was going to actually say to you that I was going to go with 1 0 because. Barca have already conceded one of Hadafe's 22 goals. So Hadafe only scored 21 other goals besides the one they scored earlier this year in a 1-0 win against Barca. So my prediction is actually that Barca returns the favor. That it's 1-0. Hadafe is going to throw 10 bodies in the box. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be... They're going to muck up this game. So I say 1-0. And uh, yeah, they're going to have to fight for it. But Barca is a better team. And the, reason, the other reason I say zero is because as impressive as the four goals were for Barca... As I mentioned, with PK now healthy, what we saw defensively against Athletic Club in that 4-4-2, Barcelona basically just defended the better version of what Hadafe does. So just do exactly what you did against Athletic Club. I expect a similar formation, and Hadafe is going to be, I'd say, a bit more desperate, if you will, than Athletic Club were. But I think Barca know they just have to get that one goal, and it's a one nothing, and that's it. All right, so I think it could happen, as you say, in the end, uh, one zero. But I can also imagine. Oh, your image. Okay, now. Uh, so I could imagine in the end it will be a one zero. But 
it wouldn't be a wonder for me if it in the end it's a 5-0. So I think we can... Agreed. Yeah, that's it's true. very uh, difficult to, to predict it. But of course, guys, uh, yeah, we hope that we can continue our uh, run also now in, in, in La Liga and take the positive things of this uh, Copa Ray uh, victory. And write also now in the comment section below, guys, for the people on uh, YouTube, if you have watched this video till now, uh, write also your prediction in the comment section and write a, a, like a uh like a keyword so we know that you have watched really this video until the end uh what what should be the keyword then so if we see this word very often in the comments we know that people watched it till now uh let's say um forza barca oh i mean that's what i always say but no i would say um i would say i want to see someone use the word uh transition that's what it was. You could talk about anything. You could talk about transition seasons. You could talk, whatever it was. I want to hear the word transition. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. I I know a better thing. Uh, guys, yeah, yeah. Comment in the comment section below. Start of a new era. So this is the uh, <laughs> the key phrase. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Copa del Rey victory. Yeah, start of it. Yeah, new one. So I mean, let's let's do our key points now before we go. Uh, for the key points against uh, Hadafe, I've said it a million times, but I mean. <laughs> I, as much as I had said that Hadafe, I mean, rather, I had said about the Copa del Rey that you could say tactics, but I, Barcelona had played Athletic Club three times prior to facing them in the Copa del Rey. So that was all about who wanted it more. I'm actually going to reverse and go, hey, you know what Hadafe's tactical game plan is going to be. It's going to be a 4-4-2. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be a lot of fouls. So I actually think it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be about who wants it more. Sure, you have to, you have to fight against Hadafe, but for Barca, they just tactically have to take care of business, exploit the spaces, and do the things that they do well, and they will win this match and get the three points. So for me, it's actually, it's very tactical. It's very, it's, it's going to be all about breaking down that low block. Uh, and it's all about the preparation uh, in training and the way that the manager and his staff get the, the team prepared for this one and finding those spaces and putting the ball in the back of the net. So I actually think for me, the key point is going to be Barcelona making the most of their numerical and tactical advantages that they have because they're a more talented team. Yeah, I just hope that um, because of the fact that now we have everything in our own hands, that we also use this situation, guys, and um, that we, yeah, like, because I remember one time at the, I don't know when it was, like uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, uh, I think we were in the similar position we we talked about it that now we have everything in our own hands because atletico or real madrid have uh, dropped some points on that day and but then we played a draw or uh yeah i think it was a draw and then it again it changed so let's react to the dropping points of real madrid with a victory guys yeah. and we press uh, put the under other teams under pressure Mm -hmm. And maybe also Cadiz will win now or uh, play a draw against Real Madrid. So yeah. players will be oh, even more yeah. motivated. We don't know it. But we shouldn't uh, look too much at the others because now we have everything on our own hands. So yeah. I mentioned this very often, this live stream, but it's a fact and the players know it and yeah. hopefully they can. Well, yeah, because Anton, we're, we're not doing a live, we're not, we don't do live coverage for Real Madrid and Cadiz. What we do is live coverage for Barcelona. So tomorrow, yeah, know, but, tomorrow for this match. I'm always the fan and, of the, of the <laughs> of other course. team of, uh, when Real Madrid. Yeah. But, I mean, come on. I, you know me. I watch second, I watch Spanish second division football. I'm, I'm a lunatic. But yeah, so I completely understand that. So tomorrow we will have the live coverage here. It'll be Anton. It'll be Omar. Yeah, I'll be back. So it'll be the full crew tomorrow for the live coverage. That'll start a half an hour before the game begins. And then the next day, it is extra time with Robert and Sarah as they break down all the post-game goodies that you come to expect. And then we don't have much of a break because we have one day off on Friday. And then the next day on Saturday, we're right back here on the locker room to prepare for the match on the weekend against, uh, I think it's Villarreal. So yeah, I mean, it, there's no break here. Barcelona are playing a lot. We've got a lot of coverage here on Twitch. So basically, if you tune in anytime in the afternoon when there's a match going on or before there's a match going on, there will be something going on here on Twitch. So that's what we have going on but Anton I'll give you the uh, I guess I'll give you the final word and then you'll get my little catchphrase at the end but final word uh, so yeah uh, so people uh, don't get me wrong uh, I I'm just uh, I was making just jokes but uh, if I watch like Real Madrid matches I'm always like the fan of the other team but uh, I'm just of course <laughs> well, for example semi final Chelsea against uh, Real Madrid I will be the biggest Chelsea fan of the world uh, <laughs> <laughs> but all right it's not this topic uh, let's win La Liga guys um, my last words as always Visca Barça and uh, Visca Catalunya.
Yeah, and I, I'm happy to have a Copa del Rey <laughs> trophy and Force of Barca. Let's do it. Let's get another one. Force of Barca. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>